Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're doing something a bit different. No articles. Instead, we have this uh, process flow diagram. Yeah, it looks interesting. It's for a delayed coking unit. Exactly. Now that might sound super technical, maybe even a little dry, but honestly, getting your head around these kinds of industrial processes, is, well, it's a great shortcut to understanding how things actually work. It really is. You see how basic materials get transformed. So our mission today, use this diagram to figure out delayed coking, what it does, why it's important, you know, without getting lost in all the complex details. Sounds like a plan. Let's dive in. Okay, looking at the start, it seems like residual oil is the input, right? And wow, it's already hot coming in 480 to 492 degrees C. That's right. It gets preheated, then it hits a furnace to get even hotter. We're talking serious temperatures needed for thermal cracking. Thermal cracking, like breaking molecules apart with heat. Precisely. You're breaking down those really long, heavy hydrocarbon chains into smaller, more valuable ones. Less gunk, more useful stuff. Okay, makes sense. So after the furnace, this uh, superheated oil goes where? It flows into one of two big vessels called coke drums. They're kept under pressure, maybe three to six bar. Two of them. Why two? Ah, that's key for continuous operation. They alternate. While one drum is actively filling up with the hot oil and, you know, cooking the coke. The other one is being cleaned out. Exactly, being decoked. Yeah. So the feed just switches between them and the process never really stops. Clever. So inside the drum that's filling, the heavy stuff breaks down into solid coke. And what else? Vapors? Yep. Coke stays behind as a solid and the lighter components vaporize. These valuable vapors then rise out the top. And where do they go? They head straight over to the main fractionator. Think of it as a big distillation column. It runs at a slightly lower pressure, maybe two to three bar. And it separates the vapors out? That's its job. It separates them based on boiling points into different streams. You've got gas, light gas oil, heavy gas oil. See here. There's also a side cut stripper pulling off naphtha. Which is used in gasoline, right? That's the one. And this reflux drum helps make the separation cleaner, more efficient. Okay, so we've got the useful vapors sorted. What about the solid coke piling up in the first drum? How do they get that out? Right, once a drum's full, they switch the feed to the other one. Then the full drum gets hit with extremely high pressure water. Look here, 140 bar. 140 bar, that's a lot. It has to be. These coke cutting derricks use water jets that literally blast the solid coke apart and wash it out. Wow, and then? The mixture of coke and water, this wet coke, it gets collected in coke haulers and taken off to storage. Oh, and that quench system up there, that's just used for steaming the drum before the water cutting starts. Industrial scale cleaning, for sure. Um, I also spot things like off-gas going somewhere and light oil to slops. Yeah, those are side streams. The off-gas usually goes to a gas plant or separator, you know, to recover any useful light ends and maybe treat it for things like sulfur. Light oil to slops is basically a lower quality stream might get reprocessed somewhere else. And this recycle product vapor, back to the fractionator. Yeah, that's often sent back for another pass to the fractionator, just to squeeze out a bit more value, improve efficiency. Okay, stepping back then, the main takeaway here is what? Fundamentally, delayed coking takes really heavy, low value residual oil stuff that's hard to process otherwise and upgrades it. Right, into lighter fuels like gas oils and naphtha. And, and solid petroleum coke. And the twin drum system is crucial for keeping it running nonstop. High heat, moderate pressure, that's the environment. It's pretty impressive. Taking leftovers and turning them into essential fuels, this is a lot about, well, making the most of resources. It absolutely does. It's a core part of modern refining, converting almost every bit of the crude oil barrel into something useful. Makes you think about what other transformations are happening just out of sight. Totally. So just to recap. Residual oil gets heated, cracked in alternating coke drums, vapors get separated in the fractionator, and the solid coke gets blasted out with water. Simple concept, complex engineering. That's a good summary. Okay, final thought then. We know coke can be used as fuel, but it's mostly carbon. Where else might all this coke end up? Are there other maybe higher value uses we don't often think about? And like you said, what other hidden industrial processes are quietly shaping our world? Something to ponder. Definitely food for thought. Indeed. Well, that's all the time we have for this deep dive. Join us next time.